Greetings folks on YouTube. So today I want to talk about lithium ion chargers. Specifically I've got a, a 18560 lithium ion battery system. Uh, it's basically two batteries, uh, some protection circuitry and a battery fuel gauge all in a little package. And it's uh, charged by uh, well a relatively crude device and the reason I'm kind of ranting on this stupid thing is I paid 1200 bucks for this system in 1999 now okay that's 13 years ago I designed lithium ion battery chargers some 20 years ago and I designed them the right way in 1999 they decided hey let's make these cheap you know this guy spent 1200 bucks we don't care we're gonna make him a two-bit charger and well that's what they did and I've gone through a lot of lithium-ion batteries over the years now I assumed that this charger you know being it was expensive and everything that it was designed well well it quit working so I took it apart and now I'm going whoa what are you guys doing well some marketing guy said the charger had to be cheap so the engineers made them a cheap charger so today I want to take a look at both this charger I've got here but also lithium ion batteries in general so let's go take a look at some data sheets and uh, and see how lithium ion batteries are supposed to be charged then we'll take a look at the charger that I have okay this is a, a graph from batteryuniversity.com they're pretty decent about explaining things so here's the deal it's when we charge a lithium ion battery we have to start out here with about a, a volt or so as, as the minimum um, and that that varies depending on what the charger is but lithium ion batteries if they're below this you can't go and start whacking them with a constant current charge or you're gonna probably you know destroy the doggone thing so what you have to do is typically instead of charging at 1C you'd actually charge somewhere around 0.1C uh, at least initially until the voltage came up or if the voltage never comes up then you know that the thing is is trashed but my cheap charger it just says hey if the voltage out of the pack is below 2 volts don't even think about it and I'm going okay that's cool how many batteries did I lose because of that so then what we do is we charge it you know they say here they're charging at 1C well 18560 you want to charge about 0.8C the, the manufacturer most battery specs 0.8C and uh, for your your constant current stage we do that till we reach up here to uh, about 4 volts maybe 4.1 somewhere in that region and then we start switching over to uh, uh, a constant voltage charge when we hit here at 4.2 volts now there's a tolerance involved and that's why I say 4.1 because you don't want to go over 4.2 if you start going over 4.2 you're starting to damage the battery and and uh, you know worst case scenario is the thing goes ballistic and explodes and you got a you know smoking pile of plastic and goo and a fire on your desk um, so they typically go on the low side of things and we keep going with this and of course uh, on my charger the light goes out right here when it reaches this point or light comes on saying yeah it's charged well it's not fully charged by any means so we keep uh, a 4.2 volt constant uh, voltage charge on it and we keep that going and we monitor our charge current till it drops down to 0.3 percent and this is when the battery is is really really charged but my charger doesn't do that so you know there's a su substantial amount of time here that we're not charging the device and of course uh, um, that's going to reduce the capacity and uh, a really nice charger will look after you turn the, the charging off monitor the voltage periodically and if it starts to drop down say like down to 3.5 volts per cell we can go and give it a constant voltage charge for a little bit again and, and watch the current uh, here till it drops down to 0.3 percent and then uh, it drops off um, you know and that's how a charger should work 
but you got some marketing guys say make it cheap so we're just going to skip all this stuff here and there we're just going to cut it off here and rely on the guy watching it like a hawk so when the light goes on to start his clock and he can then time it and then know that the thing is charged that's absolutely brilliant okay we're gonna look at this uh, cheap charger here and see what the deal is so first this is the input we got our little fuse over here to protect the whole thing keep it from bursting into flame we got an across the line capacitor to keep the noise down got a common mode choke here followed by a bridge rectifier and then a capacitor that gives us our DC voltage now this is a universal charger so that means it can take you know probably around uh, 100 volts on the low side maybe up to 240 maybe as high as 250 on the high side well here's the problem see this cap right here this big honker this cap is rated to 400 volts now if you're running 200 volts or 220 volts you're probably okay because your your peak voltage across it is going to be under 400 volts you start reaching up to 230 maybe 240 and all of a sudden you're right at the limit of this capacitor now granted this whole device is is going to stay relatively cool so it's not like you're you know running this capacitor at like 70 c at 400 volts but still you know you're running 240 250 get some spikes in there you're going to be wailing on this capacitor and that sucker's going to vent or at minimum it's going to have a really short lifespan this is a switching power supply controller chip now it's kind of irritating in that they uh, they've got conformal code on it you can't read the part number i have no idea what it is i mean i'd like to think it's ti but it might be well, I would it would, have, would it be benchmark, I guess, back in uh, 1999 before TI bought them. But it's a pig in a poke. Now, the one nice thing that they did do here is they clearly separated on the circuit board where the primary and the secondary side were. So that, you know, if you're going to be testing this thing or checking it out, you don't go over poking around over in here with the thing powered up and get whacked at 350 to 400 volts. So, I mean, that that's that's useful. Now on the secondary side we got uh, our, our di there's this big diode package right here and another diode down there and of course this is your uh, filter capacitor. Most of the control circuit that's located here on the back side and it, it's all discrete. I mean there's uh, you know got a whole gob of transistors stuck all over the place here. We got a quad op amp up here. I could read the part number on that okay. But uh, you know based upon uh, on how the thing functions uh, it's it's really a crude device what they uh, basically what they're doing is they're dumping uh, a constant current into the battery until it reaches uh, 8.4 volts which is is normal way to charge as we talked about earlier and then they go and then this this little piece here plugs into the uh, plugs into the back of the charger and on the bottom side of the circuit board and there's only three connections and you got a little LED up on the top side that uh, tells you when it's it's done well the LED comes on once you switch over to constant voltage charging so it's lying to you I mean you're you're looking at maybe 70 80 percent charge on the battery when the light comes on and if you've got a larger cell like what I have um, you know I mean I, I bought the larger battery so I could get more life but the charger won't charge it to that because it shuts off when it hits the constant current or constant switched over to constant voltage now the other thing they did which is kind of goofy um, this is the uh, actual inside of the charger you probably can't see very well you, you got a couple lead you got three connections uh, basically a common and then over here is a diode and then there's a positive and that's all it is and when it connects to the battery there's only two pins only two pins just the positive and the negative so what they're doing with the with that diode they're using that as a crude temperature sensor to tell you what the temperature is here what well, doesn't tell you what it, the temperature is in, inside the battery pack 
And the other thing this charger I found out does is it doesn't do any preconditioning. So if a battery sits for too, a bit too long and goes below the initial charge threshold, guess what? You won't be able to charge the thing again. So it's it's a it's a cheap deal. Now they may have figured that people would be continuously using this and charging it all the time and and I guess that's you know that that might be reasonable but I think of all the battery packs I went through I bet you a bunch of them just sat too long the voltage dropped below that initial charge point and they're still good but the charger can't charge them so you know the the way it tells you in the manual uh, when the green light comes on then time it for two hours and then you're charged and I'm going yeah right so I gotta sit there and wait and watch and see what that green light does when that comes on then I'm good to go that's pretty lame